Right, I've got a couple of interesting things to show you that I've done um, since my last video. And um, I've done a bit of research on how to stop um, chucks locking onto a threaded uh, spindle mandrel. Um, like this one here on the ML7. And I found out that it, is, it was common practice in the past to cut a ring of brown paper, the shape of a washer, and this was put on the spindle between this shoulder here and the back of the back plate. In fact, it was common practice um, that was used by the Royal Navy in their engineering workshops. So I've made up a very simple uh, template out of a bit of steel and sprayed it red. So I've already, always got it at hand. And I can put that on the brown paper. It's just ordinary parcel paper. Um, but I thought maybe it might be a good idea to try grease proof paper as well. And um, just draw around like that. and then cut it out. So to make it easy, when I get to that stage, just fold it in half like that and cut about a millimetre above the inner line. And then I know that it will go on the spindle nicely without creasing. So we've got a simple washer there and that goes on the spindle there and the chuck screws onto that. Now I tried it out earlier on the lathe and I'd done some machining and I was really surprised with the results. Um, I was able to just undo the chuck by hand without any problem at all. Plus it didn't cause any extra run out on the chuck. So like I'm saying, I'm very pleased with the results of that and um, my ML7 hasn't got a reverse switch for the spindle so it's safe to use this method. Um, any other lathe with reverse, I wouldn't put one of these on um, because if you um, used it in reverse, obviously the chuck would be prone to unscrewing when machining. So the next thing I'd like to show you is my new tachometer set um, which I've bought from China. Um, it's a nice little set and it's um, very low cost. It cost me £6.50 on eBay and um, that was including postage and I got the tachometer and the sensor and the nuts to mount it. So I'll just show you how it all goes together with the box that I've bought, uh, the wiring and how I've installed it on my ML7. Um, if you get one of these from China, you'll find that they don't come with any instructions or if they do, it's in Chinese. You can power these with a um, 12 volt DC supply and I'm going to use this plug off of an old um, telephone or internet router which is a 12 volt output and um, obviously you have to see which way the plug is wired and if you look on the back it tells you that the central pin is the positive terminal. So I bought this um, electrical um, instrument box from Maplins. You can get them on eBay or anywhere really. And um, this one's nice because it's got um, these screwed um, holes on the side for mounting it. And when you screw it together it obviously locks the back on. And I've cut the aperture out with a Dremel. And the tachometer just push it into the front of that one like that. Now I'm going to have my power supply um, so that I can unplug it from the box so I've bought the female socket for that one and um, 
I've drilled an 8mm hole for that one and another smaller hole for the wire to go through from the sensor. So that one just feeds through from the side there. Like that. And then you have to connect the sensor wires to the tachometer wires. So firstly you take the red one from the um, tachometer terminal and connect that one to the brown wire from the sensor. And that is the positive DC supply. Like that. Next you take the black one or the black wire from the tachometer and connect that to the blue wire on the sensor. And that is the DC negative supply. And lastly you take the yellow wire from the tachometer and connect that to the black wire from the sensor and that is the signal wire and at this stage uh, just before I solder those together you can actually test um, both the sensor and the tachometer to see that it's wired correctly um, by using a 9 volt battery. So if I put the blue black on the negative and the brown red on the positive the tachometer lights up and also the LED on the back of the um, sensor lights up which proves that it's all wired correctly. So I'll go ahead and solder those now. So that's that done. So next I just use a vise to hold the um, female socket and I know which one's the um, positive central terminal. So I'll put that one in there like that. And then the negative one. And that's the soldering finished. And lastly the magnetic um, sensor wires just need a tape over them so that they don't um, touch the circuit board in the box and at this stage again I can just test it with the DC power supply before I put the plug into the side of the box and the tachometer lights up and so does the LED on the back of the magnetic sensor so that's the plug socket fitted and lastly before I put the back on I put a um, clip round the um, sensor wire, tie clip tightly on there um, so that it doesn't pull out. Like that. 
Then the back goes on a couple of um, 4BA brass screws um, into some countersunk rare earth magnets and they go on the back um, and that holds the whole unit together. So that's it finished with the magnets on the back and ready to go onto the lathe and I've made it like this so that it's quick and easy to take off the lathe when I need to clean it and also if you make one of these uh, you're not limited to using it on one machine you can actually take it off and use it on other machines in the workshop. So this is a good place to mount the uh, tachometer on the front of the Myford ML7 or you can actually put it on the um, face of the top um, belt guard um, because that's magnetic as well and I've decided to use my spindle um, handle mandrel for the magnetic sensor so I've made this um, brass bracket up here on the top of the gear guard and I've um, drilled and tapped the top of the aluminium guard with 6BA um, threads and countersunk the brass and screwed that on the top. And then the magnetic um, sensor um, goes into that bracket like that. And that's it locked into position. And then I've put the um, magnet into a piece of brass which screws onto the, my handle mandrel. And I've put another piece of brass the other side as a counterbalance. And the handle mandrel goes into the back of the lathe and locks up um, with the nut at the back and um, I've got about five millimeter clearance between the magnet and the sensor and that's what it would look like in operation And that's it ready to go. At the back here I have a shallow aluminium tray which I use to collect any oil that drops from the lathe. And I put all my electrical wires safely under that out of the way. And that's my top speed of 858 RPM. You'll notice that when I stop the lathe that there's a bit of a delay um, before it goes back to zero and that is perfectly normal for these tachometers. Um, there can be up to a 10 second delay. So that's it on the Myford ML7 tachometer. I like to have a tachometer on a machine like this because you can see whether the belts are slipping and um, whether there's any slowing um, of the spindle due to um, blunt tools. And um, also, you may have seen in my um, one of my last videos, I changed the spindle and bearing set. So it's great to be able to monitor that.